Anticipation has three parts. The preparation for the action, which is the anticipation. The action, which is also the acceleration, but it's, I might call it the move. It's also, or the force move moment. And the completion of the action, which is the overshoot. So anticipation can be used as the anatomical preparation for a move, or what I would call a physical anticipation, or the device to direct the viewer's eye to an action, or what I would call a story anticipation. So it can be used as either. Okay, so with this one, which, which part of this scene would you guys say is the move, the main story point? So if you're looking at the scene, there's actually a lot going on. There's physical movements that have anticipations for them, and then there's important story points. In this scene, I would say this fire coming out is the important story point. Does that make sense to you guys? Because that's going to be important for whatever comes next, right? So they want to make sure the audience doesn't miss that. Then we have to notice what's an anticipation for the fire coming out. It's actually this moment where she's kind of in this moving hold of her putting air in the fire. So that becomes a story anticipation to the fire. And then she has physical anticipation to that because if this is of the move, her physical move, then as she comes up, see how she comes up and opens her arms and then she presses her arms together. So this becomes the physical anticipation. It's also used as a story anticipation. So sometimes we're identifying physical movements that have anticipations or overshoots, and other times it's story points that are important. We don't want to miss the most important thing, which in that case is the fire. Okay, so other things that are happening here that are really cool is you could tell how fast the character is going by how much motion blur there is. So when there's a lot of motion blur, that means they're going fast. You can see how the motion blur lessens. It lessens as she slows down there. Also check out her posture. Like see how she's kind of horizontal here? We've talked about how line of action, like how you lean forward, right? You lean, the more you're leaning forward, the more intense your, your walk is, right? The more you want to go that way. So how line of action is like being used to show our intention and our motivation. So see how she's leaning far over here? And as she wants to stop, she leans upwards. She's changing her speed by her line of action. Does everyone see that? And it also creates a really nice arc with the head because the head is down and then comes up and then goes down. And so she kind of eases in with her translation forward. So we are gonna see lots of examples of ease in here. But the reason is because this was a really fast move. And it's not a, this part is not about a huge overshoot. It's just about the audience like catching up with what's happening. This is a really fast shot. If you look at the amount of frames, the whole shot is like, well, she's, if you go to right here where the animation basically stops, it's 34 frames. So There's a lot going on. So a big overshoot there would actually be distracting. So she kind of eases in with her translation forward. But then she overshoots upwards. This is also a overlapping ideas. Her overshoot of her head coming up also blends in with the anticipation to her move. Also notice the shape of the arms. So see how the shape of the arms are kind of curved? This is called bow arms. Notice how they're curved here and then boom, they're straight. And they're probably kind of pointy here. So see how they're going from curve to point to pointy and then to straight. And it's happening over only a couple frames. So anytime we're going from a straight to bend, that's gonna show force. You see how her line of action changes in her body as well? The curve becomes more curved. Also notice when she's doing her moves, you guys see how her head comes down first? So not everything is moving at the same time. So here, this hand is still moving a little bit later and her head comes down first. And then after she straightens her arm, she has a little bit of a tilt on her room. So that's an example of not everything happening at the same time. Now, as the fire starts coming out, she has a very quick reaction to how her mouth is changing and her hands are coming back. 
but then only over a couple frames, she just transitions into this pose and she's basically holding this pose. That's kind of like a moving hold. 